Hello everybody and welcome to the second episode of the Going Racing Podcast here on the YouTube side and whatever platform you choose to listen on, Spotify, Apple, anything you can think of, we are available now on those platforms as usual. We got myself here, Gary, and then I am joined by my good friends of Jay. What up? Matt. Hello. And Eddie. Howdy. So we are all, four of us are here to kind of just come back for a second episode before the NASCAR season and whatnot gets underway. Uh, and then by then we'll be on a weekly basis for these episodes, but this will be the final one before we get to the NASCAR season. Uh, so I guess we're really just going to go over some NASCAR news, F1 news and rumors and whatnot uh, that's been kind of developing lately. We're going to go over the uh, eNASCAR Coca-Cola Racing Series news with the driver rosters starting to come out over the past few days and whatnot. Some of those rosters still uh, yet to be uh, I guess announced, but we'll go over what we know so far, and then we're going to go over as well the Nitro Daytona regular season finale that happened last week, as well as we're going to kind of talk about the playoffs in the Nitro series, as well as talk about Andrew Wisdom's retirement from Nitro on the NASCAR Heat side of things, and then we'll end it off with a Q&A at the end of the podcast. So um, we're just going to jump right into the NASCAR and F1 kind of rumor side of things, and honestly, I think it's better to start with the Formula One side of things this week, uh, seeing some pretty interesting developments, to say the least, along with uh, Lewis Hamilton as well as uh, Cyril over there, the head guy at Renault, or what used to be the head guy at Renault, as he just announced recently that he is completely leaving the team. He's not just stepping down from his position. He's completely left Renault before they transition into uh, Alpine racing or whatever it is. So w what's your thoughts on that, Jay? Uh came out of nowhere i know that much um i don't know how much it's gonna affect the team either in a negative way or a positive way i don't even know if they've announced a replacement yet um i i'm not too sure i'm not too sure how how to feel about it as far as a team performance goes but it came out of nowhere definitely out of nowhere uh what do you think matt I uh, yeah i didn't if it's just random, you know, he didn't hear anything about it. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to head out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where. Uh, Eddie, do you have any opinion? I mean, I, I mean, I'm not as big as you guys are with the F1 stuff, and I'm still worrying about most of it, but uh, I think it's a really big blow for right now, in my opinion. I think it will somewhat affect them during the season. I mean, we'll just see what happens as it goes on, but um, it basically just dropped the microphone and sent them out. Peace. I, I, I honestly found it really surprising because – uh they were they seemed like they were as a team starting to finally get somewhere because like they got what two yeah. podiums in 2020 three, three. oh because ocon had one at like bahrain or something yeah the bahrain and then ricardo oh, yeah. picked up a few so they were clearly starting to make a little bit of progress with the renault team and i i, I wonder like maybe he just didn't like enjoy or like the direction they were going with alpine or something you know well, it, it always kind of seemed to me like it, it, from the little bit, you know, obviously I don't pay hardcore attention to F1 outside of, you know, race, the races and all that. But it seemed to me like compared to other team managers and team bosses, he didn't seem that involved or, you know, have total control over the team. So I don't know if it will affect him that much at all. What I wonder, I what, what were you going to say? I guess we'll find out if it affects him. In what a month, and or oh, and a couple months after that, once we get do a few races and then preseason testing and stuff. And do you think um, Alpine is going to be better than Renault, quote unquote, with the rebrand, or do you think they're going to just really kind of be where they were in twenty twenty? I don't know. I mean, Ocon will be Ocon, so mediocre. In my opinion, yeah. Yeah, he 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 will exist. Um, Alonso's a big question mark because is he really gonna be good as he good as he was or no? Or is he because we don't know because he was out for a while and so I I think Fernando is one of the best race car drivers on the planet, just as a race car driver, not a Formula One driver. Yeah. But I would say I think he's going to be mediocre in the Alpine car. I, I think that team, like I the agree. driver lineup, is going to just be mediocre. 
Yeah, I think the car wise and and team wise, it may actually be you know up there competing maybe better than than McLaren, but driver wise that may hold the team back some. Um, just because oh. even though Alonso is incredibly talented, he has been out of F1 for so long and out of competitive out of F1 competitively for so long, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. And like I, I've always heard like things about Fernando and like not getting getting along with the team and complaining a lot and I'm interested yeah. to see how that that's going to work over there but I like I said I, I think Fernando's a really good driver but I, I don't think he will do great yeah I mean he didn't do great with the equipment he had with McLaren and whatnot and stuff so it'll be interesting I mean well, he still outran Van Dorn and stuff but Van Dorn wasn't Dorn. great either well driver the uh, because the team principles like rate all the drivers right yeah at the end of the season I think in his last season they rated him the fifth best driver still. No, well there you have it. I yeah. saw the they did the ratings for twenty twenty. Uh, Hamilton was up top, I think. It's been Hamilton for Stafford yeah. one two for like six years now. Vettel, I don't even think was in the top ten. No, I mean that's appropriate. Yeah, I mean as a Vettel fan, that was disappointing though. They or had the third, third, which I thought was ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think I would agree with that one. And they had Gasly tenth, which I thought was absolutely Gasly. ridiculous. Did a great like, job this year or last year. Top five driver. Don't even fight me. But I'm curious, who else would you put in third besides Leclerc? Perez. Perez. Yeah. Perez. Or, I'd put or, Perez or, a solid third or fourth at least. I would put Ricardo above Leclerc. I don't know about no, that. No, I, I actually I don't know about that. It's like to me, Leclerc never really did anything outstanding. I mean, throughout the season. Like he did in, he did in the beginning of the season. Yeah, but, I mean, he had a great first race. I mean, there was a couple points, you know, but it was nothing worth, like, I that blew it was me crazy away. They, I thought it was crazy they rated uh, Lando higher than Sainz. Yeah, Carlo, Carlo Sainz is very interested to see what he does at Ferrari. I think he's not going to be as fast as Charles, but, like, I think he's... I don't think he's going to be a pushover. Yeah, hopefully, I like, I'm, he's, like, my second favorite driver, so hopefully we see him yeah. do well. But uh, it's going to be interesting with that, and, uh, you know... We'll move on just a little bit to still F1, of course, uh, with yeah. Lewis Hamilton uh, having some negotiation issues, everything, to say the least. Everything everything is just rumors. Rumors, right now. yes. Nothing's been confirmed. We've heard a lot of things. I think the biggest one we've heard was he was asking for $200 million for a four-year deal. Yeah. And so, 10% of each uh, of the winnings of from winning. each race. And I also yeah. heard he also wanted like uh, a Mercedes, like one of the new hyper cars. Yeah. But I'll, like I said, it's just rumor. None of that is confirmed. But if we look at that, if if that is indeed like true, like it's absurd. Yeah. Like I mean, in my opinion, he's worth that. But in the situation the world is in right now, with the the pandemic, that you can't be asking for that. Yeah, and at the same time. At the same time, he is, he's what, 33, I think? 34, uh, 35? Yeah. No, I, like I, I want to say he's, he's 36. He's about, yeah, he just turned 36. Okay. Oh, he just turned 36. Okay. Well, Five anyways, days ago. I'll put him to going to his uh, age 40 season. You pay a guy in their age 30 season 200 million for four years. I, you know. It's also the same. Still, at the 200 is, is, ridiculous in my opinion um for well, a guy at age 36 no matter how good you are um so there's also rumors that he's just straight up going to retire i've heard i, I, think, I saw multiple sources say yeah, that's happening i think that i think that's 100 percent oh yeah i think there's uh, a slim possibility this, I'd say there's a 95% he doesn't retire. I would agree with that. This is, this is what I think is happening. Because Lewis can play a lot of like of his cards, right? Yeah. He's, he is the best driver in F1. You can argue for Stappen. So he, can, he holds all the cards, really. And he's just seeing how much he can get. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. he, at he's some point, he's a, at some point, like he knows a, a like I'll take this type of money, but he's seeing how much he probably can get. Yeah. And I but, mean, you can't blame him for trying to get every little 
penny that he can get out of there, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, never, never blame athletes for trying to get every every penny they think they're worth, but I don't think there's a chance at all that Mercedes pays him that much. I don't think I don't think that happens at all. There's no way. I don't think it would be a four. I don't think he'd stick around for four years either. Yeah, neither do I. But um, what's interesting is like I just don't see like him retiring when, in my opinion, of course, that car destroys everybody. He's basically handed. A free championship next year to break the record with Schumacher. Yeah, I was gonna like, say like, what else does he have to do to prove that he's like the best of the best? I mean, he's won it basically eight. everywhere. Yeah, I if he doesn't cares that much about the records though. I know, but like, I uh, really don't think he cares. That's huge though, man. Eight championships and like, it, Valtteri Bottas ain't gonna have nothing for him. But, uh, he, ha- he has so much respect for Schumacher. He may not want to break it. He may legitimately not want to break it. He may he may want to stay tied. No, it's a, it's a weird There's thing. No but way. The guy There's has no massive respect for Schumacher. I don't know. I think he might want to be put on his own like pedestal. To be honest, yeah, because like man, I don't what know athlete, what athlete wouldn't, right? But I'm yeah. just I'm just saying there's that slight possibility, and he may not care. Like, what are the odds in our lifetime of someone ever being able to hit eight after Hamilton? Uh... Verstappen, if he were in Mercedes. Yeah, 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 but then we know they're going to put well, Russell well, in that he, car. Imagine if they put... They could get rid of Bottas. We, we, we can have a little fun game. Let's, uh, unless anyone has anything else to say about Hamilton well, possibly retiring. No, I, I've, I've said uh, what I needed to. Okay. Let's, let's say there's a world where he does retire. Yeah. What does Mercedes do? Russell. Yeah, George Russell. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that that was pretty obvious. Yeah. Okay, then part part two of that, what does Williams do with George Russell's open seat? Jack Aitken. Uh, um, what good enough F two driver is still up there on the board? I mean, you can always put Nico, but I don't think Nico would take it. I don't know. Alkenberg, yeah, no, I don't think he'd want to be there. Um, he might. It's it's a ride he doesn't have. I don't know. I I, I think an F two uh, driver would probably be the one that gets promoted. To I think it'd be Aitken. Good. Although I didn't realize how old Al- he is already. Um, Albon. Albon, huh? I, well, he's already committed to doing DTM. Oh, uh, that's right. And then I wonder if they're gonna put him in like Toro Rosso for twenty twenty two, or no, right. like what's gonna happen there? Like, you think he's just done for? No, I I think he'll be back with something eventually and it, it, it's really interesting to see how the whole red bull team kind of works with like helmet marco and christian Ugh. horner leading that thing and like we see so many drivers get brought up well, ghastly failed goes into a tour gonna... rosso runs better than yeah. he did in the red bull we're gonna get our answer this season yeah i think perez is is the deciding factor where it's like Gasly did it. It's like, okay, maybe he's just not good enough. But then Albon showed potential, gets in the Red Bull, can't do anything. So then it makes me think, okay, maybe it's not the drivers that are the issue. Perez goes and wins a race in a racing point, does great all year long. And we're really going to see if it's, I think, the car this year. Yeah. Well, the question we always got to ask too is like how, how big of a step is McLaren about to take now? I think they will be... Yeah, oh, they do got that. I still think they're going to be third on the grid, and I think they'll be a little bit better, but I think they're still going to be, like, trailing Red Bull and Mercedes all year. I think Lando yeah. Norris can get a win this year. No. What about... I think that McLaren outperforms the second Red Bull, but Verstappen, because he's Verstappen, outperforms McLaren. Um, They, as a team, might be better, but Verstappen is better than McLaren. And so he may still wind up outperforming McLaren. While meanwhile, McLaren is beating Perez. And I'm pretty sure we can all agree that Aston Martin's going to overpower Ferrari, in my opinion. Yeah, that's just, that's just me. I yeah. mean, Aston yeah, Martin. I, I, Aston Martin might overpower McLaren, for all we know. As a Vettel fan. I mean, you can arguably say they did because they had the 15 point penalty. I mean, yeah. Um. And they're just going to copy the last year's mark, so. Yeah. And this is also a good chance for Vettel to show how much he still has left in the tank. And if he truly 
if he truly can still be competitive because Ferrari is going nowhere. Ah, uh, yeah. They get a change Spinalis. of team principal. And before uh, Vettel Spinala's first race, first lap again. I'm going to be really interested to see what Vettel can do. Uh, I mean, as a Sebastian Vettel fan myself, I, I really want him to do well. And I, 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 do well I just don't think I don't think it was his talent falling off that was the problem. I think it was just he wasn't comfortable in the car, you know. And I I saw an article of Helmut Marko was saying that like 2018 Germany st just started everything for Vettel to go downhill because remember he was leading that race. And then the rain came down, and then he lost it, went into the barrier, ended his race while he was leading, and then ever since yeah. then he's been spinning out, he's been crashing, all that stuff, and just like it just destroyed his like trust yeah. with the Ferrari car. Um. Yeah. Uh. Is there anything else to talk about F one? Australia, the uh, home or the the season oh, opener. A, oh my god! Yeah, there's a few things. I, I can list everything that's happened. I guess. Yeah, Australia's moved to like third from last race of the season now. And Imola is the second race of the season. We open the season at Bahrain. That'll be a boring I'm so, one. I'm so, I'm so disappointed they brought Imola back, man. It was yeah, so that was bad. an awful it race. So, it was honestly arguably probably the worst F1 I've ever watched. It was horrible. That track is not made for F1 at all. And, well, these cars, yeah, but got awful um and then uh what's the last thing winter testing is going to byron apparently ah so we'll have a good idea of what to expect <laughs> yeah we well spoiler alert people if you're expecting anything other than mercedes being the fastest you're going to be very disappointed yeah now mercedes a dominate the... There's also the track that hasn't been determined yet, but is rumored to be Portugal. Good. And then there was also the news that came out, I think it was either yesterday or today, that some issue with promoters for the Brazil race is happening, and that race could potentially be canned because of... Yeah, um, I heard about that. I can't remember what exactly it was, but there was, there was some kind of issue there where that race might be off the schedule now because the promoters screwed something up. Oh, boy. I am... Uh, um, go ahead. Uh... I would be very shocked if it's not Portugal. It makes way too much sense for it to be Portugal just because the very next week is Spain. <laughs> yeah, might as well just do that. Portugal. <laughs> Don't have to go far. Yeah. Um, but one thing I'm a little bit there's two things I gotta point out here. It's like I'm a bit disappointed that like Vietnam's very likely not happening. And like hey. we, we never got to see a Vietnam race. The only way you could see it was on the the F one game. <laughs> Hey, you know, um, it, it couldn't as we can say they have a fantasy track now. You're right. But I saw we're going to Zandvoort. But you know what surprises me is they're going to Canada, like, quite early in June. Like, uh, yeah. we're not going to dive too much into the whole pandemic thing, but I like I live in Canada and seeing the way things are right now, I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised well, to see them coming over to this side of the world. It's also not so Ontario, early. right? Yeah, I mean, but uh, it's in Quebec, which has got very similar situation to Ontario. Okay, okay. I didn't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was surprised. But, I mean, who knows? I mean, hopefully everything will straighten itself out by June 7th or something like that. I can't remember when it is, but sometime in June. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I guess that's... Is there any other F1 news that we've missed? or? I think that's anything major. Those are the big things, yeah. Um, we already know. Lewis Hamilton, eight-time champion, 2021. Probably. Congratulations, Lewis, saying it now. Um, yeah. Any is there has there really been any notable NASCAR news? Uh, I guess you can say uh, Newman's sponsorship. It's Kohler. Oh, yeah, I saw. I I swear I thought that he had that sponsor already. Also, people, just people, it's new sponsor. Yeah, the sponsorship. Yeah, he has the energy drink thing. Um, oh, yeah, Elliot, yeah. That, that, he's yeah. got a, he's sponsored by a, a company that doesn't even have a Twitter account. It, yeah, it's it's part of a it's called Adrenaline Shock. It's basically uh, apparently it's like associated with like Dr Pepper or something like that. Okay, yeah. it's only two races a year, so yeah. Uh, the first one is Atlanta, July or June, whatever that is. Yeah, and then um, the other one, but the car hasn't even been announced yet. I thought I heard it was like Talladega for the other one. 
Yes, yes, yeah. it is actually. Um, well, apparently, uh, Colleague Racing is gonna is teasing Cup plans and info to come tomorrow. Oh yes, they said they were running a part time schedule. Yep, they drive Chevy, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming um, Haley I'm will be the driver. I, 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 I'm I'm going to assume it's Almendinger at road courses. Yeah, that's all I was gonna say. I think Almendinger might be surprised in that. Um. Also, I guess another small thing is Mike Joy confirms that we're having the same graphics for Fox, like the same overlays and stuff. Oh, that's if unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> there was rumors. There was rumors we're getting new stuff, but Mike. I Joy was confirmed. told that they're bringing the HD camera from the NFL games. Yeah, was I was told. What is it? What is that camera called? The Megalodon. Like, yeah, it's like the Megalodon. It's like a really, really high depth yeah. camera that they do for like intense moments and stuff. Yeah. That'd I'm be kind of cool. seeing what the new graphics look like in 2022, although if it's anything like the NFL graphics, that's going to be disappointing because the, the NFL graphics, in my opinion, from Fox were this season were horrendous. They were awful. Hated yeah. it. Yeah. What, did they confirm they're using new graphics for 2022? Uh, it yeah, they're getting a whole rework. Oh, okay. I mean, it kind of would work well with the new generation as well of NASCAR. Yeah. And, oh! Mm-hmm. We gotta talk about the number placement. There's another uh, one too that I want to talk uh, about. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, keep that in mind. So we're not gonna dive too into this because this is a very controversial, very passionate topic among NASCAR fans. But it is Adam Stern. I saw reported there. I think it was Adam Stern that NASCAR is very heavily considering, likely moving the numbers towards the back wheel, like they did for the 2020 All Star race. Um, uh, so. Yeah, I mean, let's just give our opinions. I'm going to give mine straight up. I think, I'm personally, if it looks good, I'm perfectly fine with it. Like, you got to you gotta work the paint scheme around it. Like, what they did with the All-Star race, like, the teams just kept the same scheme and then threw the number back, and it looked awful, except for a few other teams, actually. Kansas? Were, yeah, Kansas, in my opinion, that All-Star scheme that Kansas ran... It was one of the best, or one of my personal favorite NASCAR schemes of all time. It looked incredible. Um, so, like, my opinion is, if it's done right, it looks good. I do not give a crap where the number is on the car. As long as you can see the number, I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, uh, did you see yeah. the second tweet he did? I did not. Uh, basically, he says the executives think that they should do it, but there are, there's definitely pushback. Well, yeah, I mean, of course. And uh, Jay mentioned me that he saw sponsors actually were not for it really yeah yeah spawn there there's some sponsors that aren't for it because the fans aren't for it they don't want to upset the fans yeah but i think that was another reasoning in there too but off the top of my head i can't remember yeah but the whole basis of that was i was told that it was it was like supposed to promote even more sponsorship apparently because like it was supposed to make it even bigger for the sponsor right yeah i mean you get like a whole door to put your sponsor on now yeah, literally like and you can put it in the normal that. place already above the wheel yeah so yeah, like just like i don't understand where sponsors would be a little upset i mean like maybe since they care about the fans too like it well, might so it doesn't matter to me to be honest it sponsors saying that, that they don't want it to happen says to me this is something that nascar wants to happen and not the sponsors going to nascar saying hey we want this to happen because we want to have bigger advertisements on the car that tells me that it's nascar saying hey we should do this and and the sponsors are kind of like oh hang on now we may not want that right uh, um yeah what do you think matt well we already seen this happen once this off season or well last season of the bristol dirt race which is rumored that nascar said bristol dirt race or you're doing practice qualifying every week Interesting. So that, put, that that that's the rumor so um, so what wait are you saying that was that the they had why like the bristol dirt race happened because fox wanted it Okay. Okay. And NASCAR put all the teams in that box. I see. That's interesting. I will say, I think if it, when it comes to the number change or the the number sliding back, I think it should be a case of you can move it back, but you don't force the teams to move it back because some teams may want to, some teams may not want to, and then also it comes down to a whole um, scheme thing. You know, some schemes will work with it, some won't. They can look really good with some, and they look just absolute trash with others. 
So I think it should be a case of you can move it back if you want to, but we're not going to make you do it. Which yeah, I think that every NASCAR team won't do that, but it should be. I think every team should have an option to choose to put their number either on the door towards the back wheel, like they did in the All Star race, or on the quarter panel, and then they do whatever one of those three they want, and then just go with it. You know. That'd I mean, be a little weird. It would look. It would. The only problem with that is like a whole bunch of teams do different things. It would look really inconsistent in the field, you know. And that's why NASCAR won't do it. It won't happen. Yeah, they're gonna mandate one way, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, even I think that would I look kind of ugly. Happen. I personally don't think it should happen. It, it's gonna be interesting to see if that actually. I wouldn't be surprised. Just kind of with the next gen, they're really pushing for just like different. You know, from what we've had in the past of NASCAR, mm-hmm. so like I wouldn't be surprised one bit if the number moves back. But yeah, uh, Jay, you mentioned and that then, uh, you had something to say or something, but yeah, I wanted to bring up Santino Ferrucci coming to oh, NASCAR, yeah. and that being a bit of a oh boy moment. Um, yeah, so he he's does. gonna he's gonna run the Xfinity Series for Sam Hunt Racing, and he's going to do a part time schedule with. Oddly enough, no road course. He's going to do plate tracks uh, and and short tracks and intermediate tracks. But no road courses, which is odd, considering his background. Um, a, yeah, a guy that was trying to make a career in Formula One. Yeah, and then went to IndyCar and now has come to NASCAR. Personally, I don't like the guy and I don't care to have him in NASCAR, but... If he changes or has success, then more power to him, I guess. But I don't. Yeah, yeah some things he's done and shown in the past, I don't like him. Yes, uh, over on his kind of F one side when he was trying to make it over there, he did some very questionable things that uh, didn't necessarily make him the greatest human on the planet. And yeah, I I don't really care for the guy personally either. But yeah, it'll be interesting. Apparently, I heard like he did like very poor on the road courses last year in IndyCar and like actually did solid on the oval. So I'm thinking maybe that's probably why he kind of wanted to come over and do NASCAR. I don't really know who the guy is that much though. So. Yeah, me either. I mean, from what I was told, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just think like you said, he's just trying to get affiliated to try to kind of drive more road courses to be honest. I don't know about the ovals, but I mean, I need to see what happens. I feel like he might do something that's not really smart enough to, like, say it was like a super speedway. I don't think he would be able to be smart enough to know, like, when to push and when not to push. Road courses, it's like it plays either part. You could be aggressive or you could be passive. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. That's luckily why at least he's doing the Xfinity series, so he's not going to be thrown in right into a bunch of expensive cars with a bunch of talented cup guys. Well, most (laughs) talented cup guys. (laughs) You know, I mean, I didn't even know Sam Hunt Racing was in the Xfinity series, so, I mean, that gives you an idea of what kind of car he's getting in. Well, yeah, I think, too, like, most of the road courses are, like, people's only chance of making the playoffs, too. Yeah, we got a lot of them now, too. Yeah, especially now, because... I mean, got seven road courses. I don't know if it's the same for Xfinity, but every single uh, race is going to matter for somebody in Xfinity. It could be a surprise winner every week. Or, right. You no, know, probably not, because Austin Cedric's going to be back, and he's a really good road course ringer. So, I mean, still, though, Cedric, it could be anybody Cedric's to win. So many races next year. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. Cedric's about to blow the doors off everybody. I don't know. I really see Noah Gregson hitting, like, a leap of faith right here this year. No. Because he showed it in the beginning, and then... I don't know what happened. Let's see what happens. Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton right. will be replacing a JGR driver in Cup before long, probably in 2022. I really uh, want to see Daniel Hemrick do good. I really, really do. He's on Man, JGR now, good. right? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah full time. Oh, yeah, part time. Today for part time. I thought it was full time. I thought it was full time as well. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah, oh. Full time. Oh. I'm pretty sure he's driving it full time. They announced, the, they announced the scheme he's running for Daytona, I'm pretty sure, today, too. I mean, at least... Yeah, they look good. Yeah, the Poppy Banked Supra. It looks uh, really orange and black. Yeah. The orange it's really cool. But I, I really want to see him succeed, because I feel like he didn't get the chance he deserved in Cup. I mean, he wasn't in the top top of equipment with RCR because they didn't hit their stride yet. And then once Tyler Reddick stepped in, they were like, oh, okay. We have decent equipment now, so... So the man's never won an Xfinity race. <laughs> yeah. He's had chances, though. He's just not good at finishing it. 
He's also made the final four like twice too. Yeah. Oh, there was there was one year he made the final four and he was running. And uh, yeah, he was running like P one. Like yeah, and blew up. Yep. <laughs> Very unfortunate, uh, but yeah, it'd be God, interesting. I can't, to see I can't imagine that happening in the driving in the for country. RCR. By the way. Yeah. RCR and Xfinity is good though. Yeah. After everything that happened with him. Literally, once he left Xfinity and Tyler Reddick stepped in, then everything stopped blowing up and they actually won titles. I think that's just Reddick being better. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's like parts of it, the equipment part, and then part of it's like Hemrick just not being able to finish. But I just really want to see him do well because I really think Hemrick is a good driver, to be honest. I don't think uh, it's terrible. But... No. I mean, if you want somebody to put in the car and get a decent finish with at some points... Daniel Hemrick's the type of guy to get a car, guy in the car. Same thing, same thing with Jeb Burton. That's why he's got the ride at Call League this year. True. Yeah, Jeb Burton. I remember him. He could have won Daytona. Literally, he had the winning car for Daytona. Everyone forgot about that. He got wrecked. I just saw something uh, literally right now that's really somewhat interesting that Paul Tracy has deleted his Twitter account. Um, over some stuff. I guess he posted on his Instagram earlier a picture of Dale Earnhardt, and, it, and he captioned, you think this guy would go to sensitivity training if he hurt your feelings? Asking for a friend, yes or no answer. Oh, God. And now he's deleted his Twitter. I would rather just stay out of that. No, we're not going to get involved in it. I just thought that was interesting. Uh, he's a very controversial uh, dude. But um, sticking on the NASCAR side, another thing, Anthony Alfredo, to yeah. the, what, 38 or yeah. something? 38, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've had the pleasure of um, talking to him a few times uh, with, like, the core iRacing League stuff. Uh, he's actually played with Dr. Disrespect before on oh, Call of Duty. Yeah, yep. Oh, boy. And, yeah, now he's in the Cup Series. Now, how do you think he's going to do? I mean, uh, so, um, like, I think he's a good driver, but the car, you know, mediocre. It had its he, moments. Um... I'm going to hold my thought because I want to see how McDowell did last year. For some reason, they were really good at short tracks and road courses. Well, and you look at McDowell, who's good at road course racing in general, too. Yeah, but um, like, yeah, he's he shown to be very equipment. good at road courses. And I think John Hunter got like a top 10 at Kansas or something. I, I, think, right. I, think, I think he got a top 10 at Darlington, too. John Hunter yeah. ran top 10. I think if he drives it right, I think he can probably get sneak a couple in. I don't know if he'll do as good, but I mean... I think he could be a consistent driver, to be honest. It's kind of interesting, though. Like, did he do a full Xfinity season? No. 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 Okay. Did he do a full that, truck that's season? Like the concern. No. No. Yeah. That's the concern, I guess. I, I, um, feel, I feel like this is going to be another John Hunter Nemechek moment to where he gets the full time cup ride, gets like maybe a semi decent truck or Xfinity ride, and then jumps ship to that and then starts the progress all over again of trying to get back into cup for a decent ride. I feel like he's going to pull one of those John Hunter Nemechek moves. Because that's, that's what I think John Hunter Nemechek's doing now. So I did a full year in Cup with uh, lost train of thought. Front row. front row. Yeah, front row, thank you. And then jumped ship and got a really good truck offer to drive a KBM truck, which is something you can't really turn down much. And then I feel like from there, if he goes and wins a championship, which I think he has the capability of, he can go up to Xfinity in a decent ride. Probably like, I don't know, Junior Motorsports, or maybe a Joe Gibbs, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, either or. Maybe a Stuart Haas, who knows, but... And then can go back in the cup. I think that's literally what Anthony's gonna do. Yeah, it'll be okay. interesting. You know, it, it, he jumped up the ranks very quickly. Like, I, I didn't even realize. He never even did a full season in Trucks or Xfinity. So, no. it, it'll be interesting to see what he can do. But I, I guess now, uh, we're like closer to 40 minutes, and we'll jump over a little bit uh, now to the nitro stuff real quick oh, oh boy. and um so this past week in the nitro racing series on nascar heat 5 we went to daytona for the regular season finale and um we had jay actually win the race so uh congratulations jay thank you thank you very much yeah and uh so um i was gonna <laughs> that got awkward um uh, but I was just going to ask you, yeah, how like did you pull it off? How did it feel to actually get your first win of the season? 
felt really good to get the first one of the season, especially after the way some of it has gone with the, the, the wheel issues that I've had and having to move locations a couple times for races and all that kind of stuff. So it felt pretty good. Um, it also felt pretty good to get a win this time without having it straight up given to me. Um, I will say karma did lay off a couple times and I made a mistake in the corners, uh, every now and then, but it, it felt good to, to get a win and, and to actually earn it. Yeah, it was, it was a great race for you. I mean, your actually your first two stages were terrible. Uh, yeah, they were absolutely abysmal, and then we big brain strategy again, and that's the only reason that. Oh, you know, that's we, the only we, thing that we tanked, won me the we race. tanked second stage at the end. My whole race Once I saw overall that I had was no mediocre. Chance of getting stage points in stage two, I I went around at 100 miles an hour and was just riding around in fourth gear, <laughs> trying to save as much fuel as I could. Yeah. Um. Yeah. How I, how, how was yours? Me and Jay played the exact same strategy. Well, so I played your strategy too, and I failed. Well, yeah, that's because you were trying to make moves. <laughs> yeah, everything. You guys didn't follow me. Like, God, I had like. Well, you lagged out. I mean, yeah, but at the first stage, I had it working. <laughs> it followed. I mean, yeah, freaking yeah. Hell, even did. Look I just scary, did the, the second stage. I get bored Gary riding. Did the exact opposite of what the team did the whole darn night. We were on the outside line. He's in the inside. We're on the inside. He's on the outside. I got so bored riding in the line. If I was in second, just chilling, I'd still go for a move. Yeah, like me and Gary tried to make them one move, and nobody wanted to come yeah, with it's us. Just I, like, I, I think we it was, made, we, we made the outside work that one time. Yeah, when I was leading it. No, that's when Even was leaving it, leading it. No, I was leading it, and then he jumped up in front of me. Either way, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. First, I was trying covers. to make the outside work as but, much as I could. Hey, shocker. Shocker, yet again at a plate track, JGR is the only team to make the outside work. Shocker, yeah, we did a good job there. JGR, and they're actually good at super speedways. Uh, I mean, we have, we have been good at super speedways. Yeah. But... It's because I taught you everything I know, Jay. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Well, but uh, essentially, what happened in that race is. There was a caution with like four to go in stage two or something, something along those lines. And I, I instantly, when the caution instantly came out, I'm like, I typed to the entire team, pit, 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 and we're staying out at, at the end of the stage. Uh, I believe we were the like, only ones to pit, and then the stage ended, and we all stayed out, and, <laughs> and everyone else pitted, and that, that was pretty much the race. And realistically, Jake, Jay got the lead because of the uh, first caution in stage three. Uh, I guess I really do have Eric Jones' pit crew. Uh, apparently, uh, they were slow with just taking a splash of gas, and Jay took the lead, and that's all she wrote. Because <laughs> cool. uh, everyone was uh, doing weird things on the last lap of the race. and <laughs> Including me. Yeah. I, it was, yeah, it was that, the last two laps were just... Ride quarter throttle or throttle around the track because everybody else behind you was trying to do the same thing to build a run. I was expecting was somebody just... to do sketchy stuff. Okay. Yeah, I was expecting. They did on the back into yeah. three. Yeah, because yeah. I knew I know I know Blake was behind you guys or Master, and I thought mm -hmm. he was just gonna pull out and do something sketch. Yeah, um... there was there was one thing that I did in that race, and it was a starter stage three that I wish I had done different. Uh, because Karma restarted in first, Gary was in second, and I was in third. I wish now that i would have let off and let gary get into second so that way it could have been us three but i was just so focused on in the moment of of getting as far up as, towards the front as i could and i didn't think about letting gary in so that way it could have been us three and you know us three to work together and it, it kind of screwed gary over because i mean back in the outside line like it didn't matter because i would have been bored anyways and would have tried to make a move and got hung out <laughs> so that's... you most certainly would have got hung out um but yeah, that, that was, it was an interesting race overall. Yeah, the final few laps. The Blake was, was uh, I enjoyed wild. it. Blake was trying to make every single run turn into a move, and he kept failing every single time towards the end of that race. And um, but yeah, yeah, I won a stage. Hey, yeah, I, I I don't even think I had a top five in the stages, um, but uh, I, I needed the stage win desperately. Now, now I'm the only full time Toyota Gibbs card not to win this season. Ooh. So Just get a win. Yeah, and as the viewers may know, stage win gets you a playoff point, and that is a good segue to the Nitro Racing playoffs or Nitro Racing League playoffs coming up starting this upcoming week at what track, Karma? Oh boy, Bristol. 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 Oh god, 
All right. Yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah. That'll be interesting. So I have the playoff grid right here on my screen. Oh, it, well. I think Eddie. Hold on. Oh, no, don't worry. Uh, I I'll think, check. I think, uh, I it, think Eddie needs to say something right now. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> before, and let me just go over the grid and then we'll hand it over here and explain yeah. what's happening. So the current grid after Daytona, when Daytona finished, it was Andrew at the top of the playoff grid, 26 points above the cut line. Myself in second, 18 points above the cut line. Then we had a rookie of Jonathan uh, in the 19 car, 16 above. Tyler, 7 above in the 48 car. Eddie, 18 car, uh, 7 above the cut line. And then we had Connor in the 24, 6 above. Jay in the 95, 3 above, fresh off his win in Daytona. Matt uh, down in 8th, only 2 points above the cut line. The last car making it into the next round. Then we had Durham in the four, as well as Venom in the eight, both two below the cut line. So at the end of this first round, it'll go from 10 playoff drivers down to eight, with currently Karma being the last driver in. But then it gets a little bit interesting, where we are going to hand things over for Eddie to explain a little bit. So... I'm not going to go full in detail of it. I don't want to <laughs> ruin anything else, but... In in short term sentences, I am taking a quote unquote a leave of absence for the rest of the season due to personal reasons. Uh, just stuff I don't really want to go over. To be honest, it's just for my mental health sake and yeah, physical sake. To be honest, and uh, I just think it would be better off for me to just sit out the rest of the year for both E and I I racing. I'm still gonna be doing the Nitro F1. Because we only got like two races left in that, and then we're gonna start right back up again. And then uh, once once the heat starts back up, I'll be joined back. But I'm probably gonna be done with the I racing in general for Nitro. But uh, yeah, just just really personal reasons for me. I'm not gonna go in full detail of what it is about, but uh, yeah, I I just I just need a little break. I can't deal with everything going on right now. Yeah, and we look forward to having you back next season, of course, and. Uh, it, it sucks that you're leaving for a little bit, um, but basically what happens now is Christian, Christian gets moved up. Christian yep. joins the playoffs in the the forty one. He will. He will. Yeah. He, but uh, he's he. I talked to him and he's one hundred percent okay. I said I was going to give him a choice, but he's not going to have his playoff points. Yeah, I mean he's going to be. I, mean, I I don't really see how he's going to be able to make it right. Oh wait, you know what? I just thought about it. I was thinking we've already done a playoff race. No, no, yeah, we haven't done one yet. And uh, yeah, so he's not going to no, be far behind. Essentially, our break was one hundred percent okay, giving it up. And move, yeah, and then that moves, um, Christian, and and he has five playoff points. But I told him that he will not keep them because uh, shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes so sense. He's like, yeah, he's, and, he, and he said he was up. So I mean, he's <laughs> only going to be like two below still. Yeah. So but it'll be interesting I, to see. I don't. I I'm not really concerned. Yeah, I wouldn't feel any pressure. I mean, I look at the two cars. You've had a solid season. You just haven't had the playoff points. You know. I have the second most top fives. <laughs> yeah. So like, if you just run like you have, been, you'll be fine. Uh, the only thing that could come to bite you in the back is the lack of playoff points later in the playoffs. Um. Yeah. Because like you look at it right now, say I mean, heck, you know what? From you to fourth is only. Five points, so never mind. The the the, the playoff yeah, it's the, really the, not the playoff point nerf is a uh, has been a it's a that I did for this season has been the interesting to say the, the least. The only the only big it, difference it for you is the is third. I oh hate, yeah, it, I hate oh yeah, it's OP great. playoff points. Yeah, because last season me and Andrew had a free ride to the final four. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I didn't even know you changed it, but either way, it works because yeah, it's not just a runaway now for everybody. Or for a few people, so it'll be interesting how the Nitro playoffs are going to Especially go. Like the horror show of Bristol. Yeah, and we got Bristol coming up. I'm excited though. I, I like Bristol. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's only 250 laps. What could go wrong? Never been more excited to sit out in my lifetime. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a good time. I I I, I like playoff I racing. I experienced the I racing Bristol. I don't think I want to experience the Cup Bristol. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah. 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 So, um, that was the weather. I guess, I guess we, I guess we have to get into the last thing of Nitro, and Where? that is uh, Andrew retiring. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Season. Andrew Wisdom drives a nine car, retiring 
from the heat okay. side of things at the end of this season he has won what one championship yeah last season the championship i felt like i should have won and uh, let's just say interesting finish Coach interesting yeah. <sighs> but um yeah so he's retiring after a bunch of seasons a bunch of wins he wins a lot of races um, he's on he's he's on top of the wins list. So yeah, it's gonna. I mean, like I always looked at him as uh, one of my biggest competitors in Nitro. So I mean, it's gonna kind of suck to not have him around to try and compete against. But yeah, I mean, it's gonna be interesting without him. Uh, but w- w- what do you guys think? Uh, we'll start with Matt. Uh, well, he's he's hard to beat. <laughs> Very. He's really, um, he's fast. I mean. People were shocked. I I wasn't because I because spo- spoiler alert. I knew for a while um, that he was doing. It. Um, but well, I heard rumblings myself that it might have been happening. So <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it was happening. Like almost. I think Eddie let us know he was talking about it. Yeah, he 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 told me about it a while ago too. Um. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be one of the best ever. Um, Because he's just fast, I don't know. Right. Um, That's pretty much all I got to say. We'll see what he does in playoffs. What do you think, Eddie? No comment. (laughs) Um, Uh, Jay? It's probably for the better, but um, not, not him retiring, but Eddie not saying anything. But, um... Kind of the same thing Karma nice said. He's he's very competitive, seriously competitive, and and very fast. So that's it's going to be a little bit of a of a disappointment to to not have him anymore. To probably keep Gary in check. <laughs> let's let's be honest here. Um, Gary yeah. Gary can run away with it if he really wants to. Yeah. Um. So that's that's about all I have to say as well. Yeah, I think I think it's Andrew Gary. Then there's probably a pretty good gap too. The the swarm of like third to like eighth best drivers right now. Yeah, I'm uh, fine with it. I might be able to win more. Actually, I think I have the most wins this season. You do, yeah, which is hilarious. And and, and it's more hilarious because realistically, I if things went normal, you should finally have two. Yeah, no, I I felt like Pocono, I dominated. Yeah. Um, then, there was another too. one. Darlington, yeah, I yes, I won fair. that one, yeah. Indy, uh, I won Indy. Yeah. Oh no, that was not. No, that was not fair. Atlanta, uh, Atlanta. Oh, you know what? I will say. I still one hundred percent say I did not leg into Andrew there. No, I don't think you did. Either. Jay's no, POV a hundred percent. Jay's him. POV proved it that it was not me that leg. So I, I won that one straight up, in my opinion. Yeah, you're uh, sure you're and I will keep saying to the end of days, I should have won Texas, not Gary. But... Yeah, that, that was interesting. Worked and out I'll for me. Say that I should have had a chance to win Chicago. Yeah, right, yeah. We'll leave it at that. I was right behind that. That was interesting. But yeah, you know what? So that's kind of the, looking at what's going on in Nitro from last week and going into the playoffs. Bristol this upcoming Saturday. You'll see it on my channel probably on the following day on Sunday. But now we're going to move in uh, towards. The last few parts of this podcast here tonight, a little bit shorter than the first episode, uh, now there hasn't been a ton of stuff to talk about that's happened in the last week, but we want to move on uh, to one of the other core parts that we're going to be talking about throughout this whole upcoming racing season, and that is the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series. All four of us, like I mentioned before, big fans of the iRacing side of things with the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola series. The racing they produce there is incredible uh, on a very regular basis, usually better than what you see on the real life side of things. But there's a lot of interesting things going on right now where some new teams have come in. There was free agency, so every team has been signing drivers and whatnot. Uh, so we have, like I said, a few new teams that have joined this season. Some notable is Space Station Gaming that I, I've never heard of in my life that has come in. Um, we got McLaren. Which is really cool. Then a, a team called Xset, which I have no idea what that is. And then I think uh, is Elliot Sadler Esports a new one? Yes. It so what? Uh, four new teams? Uh, five actually. Five. What's the fifth one? Um, it's I can't remember the team name, but it's with Michael Guest and uh Jim Beaver. 
Jim, no, but Jim Beaver Esports was there last year. Oh, no, no, no. It's uh, Michael Guest and King Cook. That's a team? Yeah, that's, that's Jim Beaver. Yeah, it's Jim Beaver's team. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a new team, but there yes. was, Jim Beaver was there last year. So did yeah. you, four uh, and a half new teams. Did you mention Xset as well? Yes. Yeah, you did. I don't know what Xset is either. Neither do I. No but. idea. Uh, unfortunately, I, I thought we would figure out more of the drivers by now. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go over what we have learned. Stuff, yeah, we'll go over what's I confirmed. I just checked Malik Ray's Twitter, and he has not mentioned where he is. No, he has not. So. Interesting. The rumor um, was McLaren, though, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I heard. Yeah, but we do have Stuart Haas's announcement. Yes, uh, Graham Oof. Boland to the 10, and Dylan Duvall to, to the, the 41. 41. Wasn't Duvall already there? Yes, Duval was there before. And Bolin was on JGR. Grant um, Bolin's going to be in the Smithfield number 10, and Dylan Duval is confirmed to be in the Ford Performance 41. And uh, let's, uh, let's get a. I feel um, meh. <laughs> meh. You know, Bolin. Thing, to be honest. Grand Bolin had a few moments where he kind of shined. I, I think back to the Martinsville race earlier in the season, he was actually leading. Uh, the early portions of that race, and then he actually got taken out in a crash with like some lap cars, and it, it completely yeah. messed him over. Uh, I kind of started watching at the end of the season, so. Dylan Duval, um, I know he's fast because I, I I've competed against him in a practice session on iRacing, racing, and he was really he was way faster than me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we look at the spreadsheet we got here of other confirmed stuff. Austin Dylan's team for Team Dylan Esports, whatever it is. Uh, they got Corey Vincent in the three. Taylor Hurst in the 33. You guys' thoughts on uh, that? Maybe Eddie? Um, I think it's an improvement for Corey. Uh, I mean, I know Renegades is uh, not with them anymore, and I think uh, hopefully he can have a better year. I know he was like a mid-pack driver, to be honest, and uh, I really think he has the time to improve. He had a couple moments here and there. I think one of them was, I believe, I want to say Texas. And uh, as of Taylor Hurst, I haven't really known much of him. I think he was there last year, but I can't remember right. Either that or he's a new guy, but... I think he might be there. No, the only rookie is the, that Isaac guy. Oh, okay, but... yeah. So Taylor, I think, was there before. But, uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see how they do. Uh, what else do we got that's confirmed? Klagerman Esports? Yeah. Apparently, did, so Burton left, apparently? Like Jeff Burton? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're no longer affiliated. It's just Kliger, uh, Kligerman Esports. Yeah, but I guess like it was a, a it, apparently it was a mutual thing. Like there there wasn't like any beef. <laughs> no. But um, no, no. so in the forty four, it's gonna be Isaac Gann. Apparently, yeah. Is that a rookie? Yeah, he he's, won the, uh, he's a rookie, but he, he won, won the championship. I'll ask him to get on the podcast next week. Don't worry, or for, <laughs> for the start of the season. Uh, but then we got Bob Bryant in the seventy seven. I know he was there last season. He did yes. All right. He was. He was the replacement for Ashton Crowder. And oh, that's right, had, yeah. He had, I believe, if I remember, like a couple top fives and a lot of top tens. Yeah, the one thing I will say about Bob Bryan, I think I think last year was his first season. Uh, maybe his first season, maybe not. I don't know if he was there, there the year before. Uh, but he was on Larson's team to start the year, and then that went to basically an unnamed team, and then he went to Kligerman, so... I would say maybe he hasn't really had a chance to show what he can do just because he's been kind of surrounded by changes and all that kind of stuff. So, um, he, you know, he may be better than everybody thinks. Was Ashton he Crowder... He run pretty good. Yeah, he didn't do bad. Was Ashton Crowder the guy that got, like, booted for cheating? Yeah. So, yes. but he's on the roster this year? Yes, he drove back in from the uh, Pro Series. He was, he was eligible huh. to come back through the Pro Series. That's interesting. In. I don't know if I would allow... <laughs> That personally, knowing he's got a past of cheating, but um, because I just see his name there on the roster, I was like, okay, that's weird. But yeah. um, so we got the Wood Brothers gaming team. Garrett Lowe's returning to the one twenty one. He had a he had a solid season. I think uh, this is my favorite move, to be honest. He he ran right better now. than Alfala did in the twenty one. By the way, that's way better. Um, uh, even that, I think the Gorolensky move is better. Gorolensky, he won the Clash last year. I remember that. Yeah, yeah he's not bad. Then he um. He was up there in the mix, in one of the yeah. la like towards the end of the season. I remember that. Like he, he didn't make the playoffs, iron. but no, he's he was a really good driver. I I really liked what he did, and I really think that this is a big time move for him too. I think he's trying to put his foot down and say I can be 
with Garrett and be able to be able to finish top ten, top fives on a consistent basis. Yeah, that'll be good competition there. Uh, then we got Jim Beaver, esports, Michael Guest, and Kane Cook. Uh, you know, two solid drivers again. That uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how they do. And, you know, what's most interesting to me is we got a lot of big names that yeah, have not I got been confirmed. More rumors about a couple fillings. Um, so what I've been seeing, Denny Hamlin Racing, I was told is probably going to stay the same with. Casey Kerwin and Keegan Leahy. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me, too. Um, The other rumor, and... Well, actually, two of them were big that I saw. So, Michael Conti, I was told, was either going to stay at the 8 or go to McLaren. But it was more confirmed that he was going to stay in the 8. And if he stays in the 8, his new teammate would have been would be Logan Clampett, which I'm very excited about if that happens. And it sounds very realistic to see that happen, too. Mm-hmm. And then the other announcement that I heard was the big signing would be Mr. Ray Alfala to Joe Gibbs Racing. W- along with, uh, I forgot who, oh, um, Bobby Zelensky. Oh. I was told VRS would go to Joe Gibbs. <laughs> that was the rumor I heard. Alfala oh. and Zelensky. Oh, I, I see, I can see it happening. Zelensky will show up for the road courses. And then, yeah, be subpar of the ovals. But uh, Alphala, yeah, uh, honestly, I, I, yeah, if it's if it's not JGR, I feel like I, you could see Alphala go to, like, McLaren. And then there was a new announcement just made a little while ago that, uh, well, Malik's been talking about he was going to make his announcement tonight, and one of the rumors was that he was signing a real-life team, and really, one of the real-life couple, there's only, like, two real-life teams that are still up there that really make sense. And that's JTG and Roush Fenway. Yep. McLaren. Well, that's a real life team in NASCAR though. Oh, okay. That's that's where they're pointing at. And I and a lot of things I saw from his Twitter feed apparently he's been liking a lot of Ford posts. So apparently cool. he apparently he might be going to Roush Fenway, that's where they're leaning at. Either drive the six or the seventeen. Okay. I think um Williams Esports really needs to push for a big name this year. They've had, they've done two seasons now, and they've just been, they've had sub, like, subpar drivers. Well, I heard that Ryan Luz is not returning to that. That's what I've been told. That's what I've seen. Apparently, Ryan Luz is the favorite to go to uh, McLaren. Malik actually said himself, he said, it's a real-life team, so that might help you get a little closer. Yeah. He actually said that himself, so. Yeah, I forgot Williams had Lutza, and I mean yeah, Lutza was in the final four, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lutza probably should have won. He would he would have won until yeah Zelensky ran out of talent. And we could basically all confirm that Nick Ottinger is probably going to return to William Byron Esports. Yeah, I don't I mean, see how that doesn't happen. Me if he doesn't, if he, it would surprise me if he left, to be honest. Mm. Novak left after his championship with Roush. Yeah. Missed the playoffs or missed the cut line actually. Uh, in yeah, general, back, yeah, I, I mean, he's back. So. Leave in that case, though. I think I think Novak and Jimmy are going to stay in Richmond. I think they're just waiting on that. I I don't see how they split, to be honest. Apparently, that uh, the Richmond announcement's on Thursday. Yes. So we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, maybe maybe this whole roster will be filled out almost by th- next week. I would hope so. Yeah, there's the other, th- the other thing that's more than likely leaked is that Ashton Crowder will be driving for uh Elliott Sadler Esports because that basically was who he was driving for in the Pro Series. Oh, okay, yeah, that's... And one of the numbers would have been the 98. Interesting. Okay. And they are driving forwards, I was told, too. Uh, When does the season actually start for this? Well, I know they have a clash. That'll probably be the same week. February. I think February or March. I know they start around... I know they start around, like, real life, almost. Yeah, no, Daytona will be, like, the same week. I think. Just on a Tuesday. They maybe announce that they're going to implement some of these races into television. Which would be really good for them. That's good. Yeah, eNASCAR has been taken off big time. Uh, the pandemic really took it off, and when they had it uh, on TV for the Pro Invitational, yeah, because I started, because I started watching it at the end of the season with you guys. No, it's a, it's a blast to watch on a weekly yeah, basis. No, 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 they no. put on great shows, and uh, you know, I, it's still catching me off guard, like to see Space Station Gaming. Hmm. Like who who the heck is this? It is a very very popular uh esports team they've done rainbow six siege that's where i basically know them from and uh i think they've done a couple other games but they've been known in the community for a while 
and plus now since I think they're really trying to get into NASCAR because they just recently signed Haley Deegan as a as a streamer partner with them. So I think they're really just trying to get on the NASCAR scene now. To be honest, I think it's gonna be like part of like that Renegades deal because Renegades is also an esports team that's done a bunch of other video games and they got on here and now since they're gone, I think Space Station's like okay, our turn. Let's fill the spot and try it out. See how it works. Yeah, I, I just looked up Xset, and they are also an esports team uh, with 20,000 followers, 20.3,000 on Twitter. Um, yeah, so two esport teams. I mean, we've seen esport teams, of course, in the past, like uh, Eddie just mentioned. We also had G2 esports. They uh, had Lutza and uh, Timmy Hill. Quite the uh, talent gap there. Uh, Lutza destroyed Timmy on a weekly basis. I'm surprised G2 left, I guess, because they're so big. They had some nice paint schemes. Dude, G2, like, because I watch, because I, I play a lot of League of Legends, and G2 is my second favorite team. And, dude, G2 is so, their jerseys are so good in that, in that too, man. G2 is just badass. Could, could we talk about how cool it would be if uh, 100 Thieves joined? <laughs> It'll be massive. Like as Remember me and Jay the, love them. So. I think it was last year when they were building their new facility. He uh he showed off the the little sneak peek and it was like a it looked like he had a uh racing rigs or the racing chairs or something. I can't remember exactly what it was now, but it was it was almost like a tease, like they were gonna do something with uh have something with racing involved. And Gary and I were both were massively hyped, and then it never happened. Maybe twenty twenty two. Hey, you can watch uh, one of the thieves get clapped by uh, Cloud9 in League of Legends on the weekly. No, thank you. <laughs> I, I like 100 Thieves. They're my favorite esports team. So. I like them. I like um, Nate Shot. Yeah, Nate Shot's cool, dude. Matt Haig is his name. Good dude. Um, Does a great job running his company. They started that 100 Thieves out just as like an apparel thing. Clothing. They're and, new. It's like 2018-ish. Yeah, no, they're still yeah. really new. And, uh, yeah, he turned it into, I mean, he's gotten help from Drake, Scooter Braun. It's huge. They've hit, they, they, they've hit just the big league, of course. They're, they're like, one of the most known names now in esports. So, and they always drop, like, fire merch. And, unfortunately, I've never been able to get my hands on it. Because they Um, sell out so fast. Yeah, so, yeah, 100 Thieves is Call of Duty, Fortnite, League of Legends, Valorant, and... They were CSGO, but not anymore. Yeah, because they, they started a team, and then they had to pull out. And then they they even had to pull out a COD for a little while. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's uh, I would really like to see, though, a team like that get involved in the uh, future. So, now uh, that we've got... Is there anything else in NASCAR related, actually, before we move on uh, that we need to touch on I at guess- all? I guess we go to your Q and A and your Discord, huh? All right, yeah. I guess it's time for the the podcast questions here. So, I, I, on my Discord server, I have created a podcast questions channel for everybody to go in and ask any questions directed at uh, hopefully us four and not me um, specifically. So, we're going to go through some of the questions. I don't think we'll answer them all, of course, but we'll go through uh, a handful. It's all of them are- Ask the last one, basically. Yeah, you know, we'll start off with the first one that I see here that can be directed towards us. Uh, do you like cheese? Sure. <laughs> I, I I personally prefer marble cheese. I, yeah, I like cheese. I'll I'll just put yes, but like, sure. <laughs> uh you know what? Here's a good one. I like this one. It's from uh, Vixen community member, longtime community member. Has made some schemes for me on the NASCAR heat side as well uh so uh what is your top five favorite games of all time um i'll start i guess that's a really tough one for me because i have three main ones and then like let me think of like two uh, you know what? i'll put gta 5 at number five hmm. i will put oh let me see here number four i just need like one filler what was better than like GTA 5. Yo! Oh. The Sims 4. Number 4. Okay, I love that game. I still play it today. Uh, then number 3, I would have to put Red Dead Redemption 2. That came out 2018. Very good game. Number 2, 
I haven't finished the game yet, but I've been enjoying it thoroughly on the PC. That is Cyberpunk 2077. And number one, uh, my favorite game of all time is Fallout 4. I, I love that game so much. It, it's an incredible game. The story, all the things you can do. Um, I just got it on PC recently, so I'm looking forward to replaying on there and hopefully with more mods. So those are my five favorite games. So yeah, Fallout 4 at the top of the list, and I think it'll be extremely hard to beat that. You know, actually, Bethesda announced that Indiana Jones game today. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I'm not sure what to think. I, I don't really have interest in Indiana Jones. But I thought that was interesting, and Todd Howard is the lead of it, and I, I refer to him as uh, fa Father Todd, so I'll, I'll play anything that he makes. But uh, now, uh, Jay, what, what's your top five? Uh, in no particular order, uh, Dirt to Daytona, Grand Theft Auto V, uh, kind of a couple of the same things, you, Red, De or, um, Red Dead 2 as well. Fortnite, when it like the first year and a half to two years that it was out, the crab was addicting, could not stop playing it. Um, and then what was my fifth? I had it on the top of my tongue, I can't remember. Uh, oh, yeah, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Okay, now is, is there one on there that though, like it's right at the top? Like, is there one out of those five that's the all time favorite? Hmm, um, I probably put Hot Pursuit at the top, or okay. not Hot Pursuit, Hot Pursuit 2. Ah. One on the PlayStation. Uh, that was... I played that game for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours when I was younger. I never played that one personally. The first Need for Speed I played was uh, Carbon on the PlayStation 2. Which was a pretty good game. Um, Matt, what about you? Your top five? Uh, no Order. Uh, League of Legends. Borderlands 3. Um... Black Ops 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, um, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, and then, um, oh, this last one's tricky, um, so many options, uh, honestly probably Doom Eternal. I know, are you sure that Borderlands isn't at the top? Uh, probably, probably Legal Legends. You, you play, yeah, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say you play a lot of Borderlands. You know, I get I on do, Discord and Karma Status Borderlands. I, I, I haven't been playing it a lot because, like, I've literally done every, pretty much everything, and I'm just waiting for more DLC at this point. But um, uh, yeah. I've been playing League of Legends for oh, yeah, you God, do play that a lot. Not, it's all, it's been almost nine years. Oh God, goodness. Um, oh, outbreak, Eddie. What about you? Top five. Oh man, um, probably the same thing as everybody else. Not in particular order, but uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, um, Battlefield Three, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Two, uh, Need for Speed Underground Two, and uh, number one probably Halo Three. Okay. That's a good one. A lot of games I've never played. <laughs> um. All right, so there's our top five favorite games. We'll move on to another one. This has to do with NASCAR games. Uh, should 704 add the yellow line rule for the next NASCAR game? I think it's just a yes or no. I, absolutely. Yeah. Um, like for super speedways? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Kind of surprised it's never been a thing. It should probably be the same thing as they do for road courses. What, like stop the car on the track? <laughs> Stop the car at halfway. Oh god, that no, that sounds that horrible. Would, that would, that'd screw be bad. It. That'd be Why interesting. That'd, that'd be bad. Why not? I mean, screw it. That sounds, in there. That, that sounds like a horrible way to do it. Um, favorite NASCAR schemes. Mine, Jeff Gordon, two thousand and fourteen, Drive to End Hunger, uh, the playoff version. Oh, that was my all-time favorite NASCAR scheme. Second up would be the the Matt Kenseth uh, All Star scheme from twenty twenty, but nothing can top twenty fourteen. Jeff Gordon drive in hunger. What about you, Jay? Uh, come back to me because I'm still thinking. All right, what about you, Matt? Uh, the one that comes to my mind instantly is uh, Kenseth's uh, Crown Royal cars. 
The purple one? Yeah. Back in like 2000. 10 11. and 11. Yeah. Those I girls that. are so good. Eddie, you got one? It's like a three way tie for me, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I like Chase Elliott's uh, Mountain Dew car with the black stripe green paint. And then. The two others are going to be a little bit of a surprise, but uh, I fell in love with Tony Stewart's Home Depot car. Big time. This is straight up orange one? Just straight up orange. I don't know why. I just thought it looked fantastic. I liked the whole apparel of it. And then probably the third one has to be his Old Spice car when he ran in the 14. Oh, yeah, I remember that. He had some nice Old Spice paint schemes. Yes, he did. There's just some sponsors in particular that always just get fire schemes for their cars. Yeah, like he had Mountain like Dew. So many good ones for the 14. He had like the Office Depot, the Burger King, and the Old Spice one were all nice. Find one yet, Jay? Yeah, I had to figure out what, uh, what year it was, I, and I still don't even know. But there's the first one, my, my definite all time favorite is Jimmy Johnson's 08 uh, Low Scheme. And then I'm still trying to find it, but there's a there's a certain Mobile One scheme, uh, from like the early 2010s, maybe even 20 2009. Um, there's on the 77 car. Oh, Sam Hornish. Yeah, Sam Hornish. Yes, Hornish. that paint scheme was unbelievably beautiful. I love that paint scheme. So the 08 Johnson was your favorite. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought it was the 09. That that the 09 one. That was my favorite with like yeah, the kind of curves and the swoops and um all right so how did you guys meet we all kind of met through nitro <laughs> well other than me and jay me and jay met in it's like november of 2012 and on nascar, NASCAR the game inside, inside line baby car, yeah. or nascar, car, heat. I just NASCAR, NASCAR heat inside NASCAR line yeah NASCAR we just leaked a new line. name for the game car karma lured me <laughs> to an early bird dinner Oh, all right. I I didn't know that's how you met him. What? <laughs> uh, no, we met through Nitro. <laughs> all right, we'll go through a couple more questions here before we call it a podcast. Um, here's an interesting one, actually. If you have one, what is your favorite race day food? For me, pizza. pizza yeah, that's a good one. I always like <laughs> chips. Just any type of chip, you know. Does a beverage count? Uh, I mean, a beverage can count. Like, uh, I mean, I always enjoy a, a Pepsi along with mine. What, what about what about you guys? Probably hot. I don't steaming. necessarily have one. Probably hot steaming wings and an ice cold beer. To be honest, not to go on tell. Nothing goes better than a Michelob Ultra or a Bud Light. Sponsor me, please. Hmm. What's that? You didn't hear any of that? Uh, I had to go grab my Pepsi out of the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait. Nice he said wings. Bro. He said wings, wings in a beer. Ice cold beer. Ice Especially cold beer. Especially a Michelob Ultra or a Bud Light. Please okay. sponsor the podcast. I'll let it. I'll let it this mishap out. Don't worry. Um, uh, I'm, just, I'm just reading through the questions. I'll answer this yeah. real quick. Uh, why is Karma's name Karma MGO? I think it's MJO is his initials. Yes, you are correct. It is those are my initials. Matt something O'Brien. Matt what? Jonathan O'Brien. Jonathan. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, actually the way the way my friends meet me on this, it's uh Matt. My name's Jeff sure O'Brien. My name's Jeff. My name's Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Jeff. You need to do that for your intros for your YouTube videos. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Karma, my name's Jeff O'Brien. <laughs> Wait, your middle name's Jeff? No. Oh. Damn it. Dang. It's close. Man, that would have worked better. Attention. No, it's, it's, it's close, close though. You're really uh, trying to get that sponsor for Pepsi, aren't you? Hey, I want Pepsi sponsor really bad. Don't we all all right, we're going to do, we'll do one more question and what is your favorite NASCAR track and why? Olmstead Miami for me. Um, you can run multi grooves. You can get right up on that wall and just rip around the high line, and it just—it's always like a good race there. And it's a true shame that it is no longer the uh, championship race because they always put on a good show. And compared to 
Um, I, I, we only needed to see one Phoenix race to realize that what we lost out of a championship race at Miami because Phoenix was just, compared to Miami, awful. Um, I think it yeah. was fantastic. Well, of course you do. <laughs> but looking at it as a uh, racing standpoint, that race was not good whatsoever. That, uh, no, that race was awful. But at the same time, 2019 Miami in particular was just as bad as 2020 Phoenix. But other past Miami races were so much better than Phoenix. Uh, mm. But what but what about uh, you guys, uh, Matt? What's your favorite track and why? Um, Bristol, because it's Bristol, baby. Bump and runs? I, yeah. Short track race. Short, short track race. Short track race. You got a favorite, Eddie? Dover Speedway. Okay. Isn't it international? Yeah, that one too. Hmm. <laughs> gotta love it. Why? Why is yeah. it your favorite though? Because it's the damn monster. That's why. There's a giant monster boulder just sitting right out the track, and he just stares at me and just looks like he wants to kill me. No, no I'm just can't kidding. confirm. I can't confirm. I have seen it. Just, but the racing every time I go to it and just watch, it's just fantastic. I just enjoy how the track's made and everything. It's just a fun venue to be at, in my opinion. I think it's very slept on. Yeah, I, I would like to go there one day just to see the monster alone. Dude, um, it's great. How about uh, how about you, Jay? What's your favorite? Biased favorite would be Atlanta. I, I knew it. Um, just because well, not not until recently, it. and recently it's gotten kind of bad, but. A few years ago and, and before that when it was still old older surface not old and decrepit like it is now it was the speeds were insane tire fall off was insane and it was at least to go to it was fun but i think non non-biased kansas would would have to be my favorite track um just the fact that you can run the outside line there so successfully rip it around the wall and then if you want to you can run the inside line too and make it work it, it it usually will make for great racing. Um, so that, that's definitely aside from personal favorite because of Atlanta being close to me. Kansas is is definitely my favorite track. And uh, I like that one. Yeah, I like I like Kansas too. But I'm 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 actually really worried about it. Like in ten years from now, I feel like the outside's gonna be way too good. <laughs> They'll have to do a slide job. I'm all Dude, down for that slide job. No problem in that, to be honest. <laughs> I do like some slide jobs. Um, all right, so there's more questions, but we will save that for another episode of the podcast uh, so we don't go through all of them in one and then have none for the next one. Um, so, yeah, I guess we're just going to end it here where we have now actually gotten to an hour and 18 or so minutes, so we've done pretty good today, I think. Yeah. Um, we talked about Nitro, the eNASCAR stuff, some F1 rumors, and a little bit of NASCAR news as well. Uh, so I just want to say thank you all. We're coming out here today or tonight whenever you're listening and wherever you're listening over on YouTube, Spotify, potentially, maybe Apple and whatnot. I saw we were getting some plays on Spotify. We we're up to like eight plays on Spotify, by the way. Which Hog. was, yeah, let's go. Which was, that was pretty I'm nice. One of those plays hey, support my own same. podcast. I was one of them too. <laughs> let's go. To, to All right, so we got like four plays. <laughs> uh, it said I had. Four of you, you are, you are a beautiful human being. It said it was like 12 unique listeners but on eight plays and i was just kind of like oh okay don't know how Makes that sense. works yeah uh anyways yeah guys listening we really do appreciate it um you know we know this is not going to be the most popular podcast and whatnot but we just kind of like to talk about nascar and stuff so we thought we'd just record it and put it up there to maybe the internet someday. maybe we'll see but yeah so thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us for this close to hour and a half episode and we will see you guys at the start of the nascar season in early february so kind of are we gonna do another one maybe before daytona because that's one month away pretty much uh, i'm sure it's gonna be enough well i guess one. we'll start um more. when the clash so like a week before or two at least yeah clash is like early february yeah so it might be three weeks two or three weeks till another episode so we'll, we'll get that all decided we'll let you guys know uh, yeah, so thank you, for, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.